Now, you have recently been to Israel, mm -hmm. and uh, what I heard so far is not much, but I heard that you really were treated very badly there. Mm -hmm. Can yes. you tell that a little? First of all, it's maybe good to tell you some background. Yeah. Uh, some years ago, in the place where you're sitting, some um, Zionist came here, two. One was very strong, and the other one was... Uh, like the intellectual of both of them. And he, uh, they come here and uh, overwhelm me. And they treat me with electric shocks and injections, which make and break my bones, what make me very sick after it. Until today, I'm suffering. The Dutch authorities uh, recognize me as a victim of violence. Um, I got even some comp compensations from the Dutch authorities. Today I'm officially recognized as an invalid. I can walk, but uh, as you know, I have a wheelchair, um, and uh, I have diff very much difficulties with my health. Unbelievable. When was that? Uh, it was in the date 8 March 2000. Have you been warm before or something? Yes. Uh, the, they call me and they say that I have to close my mouth. There are records, uh, telephone uh, records, and the police were translating it. Mm -hmm. And they want to, me to do some so-called religious uh, acts as a covering for the crimes that they want to make. They represent it as if it is religious matter, a divorce matter, family matter, which is not true. They just couldn't say that they, as Democrats, Democrats uh, demanding me to close my mouth. So they had to represent that, that if, as if it is a rel religious matter. Mm -hmm. And the same while they uh, stole um, all what my mother left over in Jerusalem, all her property. And she had some, she had some uh, things what she get from my grandfather who was running away in 1929 from Hebron and he brought and took out from Hebron a uh, very important uh, Judaica uh, articles, such as books and ceremonial uh, things. Yeah. And uh, all those things were stolen. Also, a book, what I was starting uh, to write and did not complete. And also uh, some kind of proofs about my Palestinian backgrounds that the ones to uh, that it, that I will not have. So they they want you to be an, not a Palest Palestine Jew but a Israeli Jew or what? what, what they you? want to hide some proofs about uh, harmonious life before be, before the establish the establishment of the Zionist state. They want to show that. Uh, um, the state is necessary. They don't want to hear the Jews used to live peacefully with the Muslims okay. and the relations were pe perfect. And this is what I'm saying to the world constantly. I am Palestinian Jew. Um, we have no feeling of animosity with the Muslims over there. We have um, friends who are Muslims and we can cooperate and do with each other very nice. When I compare to relations around the world, the relations that we have with the Muslims in Palestine, we, my father, my, my mother, were very good. There, is no, there was no reason to talk so bad about them and for sure not to do so bad about them. We have no reason for it. Yeah, um, we can talk about what Israel does to Palestinians maybe later, but now you went back to Israel and yes. uh, talk about that. So about uh, eight months ago, the Minister of Justice, uh, Mr. Um, Alexander Krab, from Israel or from, no, from here, from, from, from Holland, okay. uh, told me that there would be an opportunity to meet my son, which I did not meet for 16 years that did not let me see my son for 16 years now. And he told me that he arranged some things in uh, Jerusalem uh, with his colleague over there from the Minister of Justice, Mrs. Uh, Regina Tapuchi. And when I will go there, then I will see my son after all those years. Something what is very difficult and breaking my heart for a long time. So I ask a medical assistant to come with me and we go there. 
And when we go to the authorities he sent me to, they say that they don't know him, and I have nothing to search over there, I'm just a tourist, and they will not cooperate with me. I tried for about four or five times, and uh, the five times they tell me if I will keep on disturbing them, they will call the police. So I didn't know what to do. And um, that was not the only reason I went. Also, my doctors told me that uh, treatments in the Dead Sea would be good for my health after the torturing and so that I was passing. I get a lot of treatment in the meanwhile, mm. all these years. Okay, so after 18 days, I thought for myself, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean, it seems like <laughs> they don't want to let me see my son. So. I book my fly back, and in the airport, uh, before I say, before I show my passport, some policemen came to me and they say, uh, first they say Yosef, and they say Rabbi, I say with a hand like this, and I say yes sir, they say to me you're not flying nowhere, you're staying here. I was surprised first how they know my name without to see my passport, and second I asked them, but why? I'm not a citizen of you. I live in Amsterdam, I'm citizen of Holland. What, what can be the reason to leave me here? They tell me you have to give a lot of money to the state and they laugh as if that I have to feel that it's not the real reason. I say, what kind of money? They say, you have a son over here. I say, I never met him. And just since short, I know he's alive. And you took so much money for my family already. You took a lot of property in millions. They say, yeah, yeah, we hear all those things you, say, you can say to the courthouse. And they give some, put some papers in my mouth, in my hand. And they say that they're going to take all my luggage out of the airport, of the airplane. And uh, they say, I will not fly. And then they escort me until the end of the airport. And, okay, then I was very weak already from everything what, what was happening. And I wake up in the hospital, in Yechilov hospital. All the situation, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they let me go after, out of the hospital. I went to Yerushalayim and I went to Measharim, the Orthodox neighborhood over there. And I say to the people what is going on. They say that uh, they want to, ch to check it, if it's true. So they check it. And then they say, yeah, you are not allowed to leave the country, as it says in the papers, you have to go to the courthouse. I went to the courthouse, and the courthouse, they say that they want something like half a million of me. I say, for what? You take it already so much. I say, otherwise you will not go out. And um, outside of the courthouse, some officials come to me, and they told me, Tell me, you already forget about the, all these stories that you say, the kidnapping and the torturing. I say, I did not forget. I say, no, it can help you to go out of here. And they go, smiling, laughing. Okay, I went out, and I went again to Measharim, and people over there say that they check it already, and it seems that I'm allowed to leave the state. Mm -hmm. I tried again for the second time, and uh, went to the airport with my wheelchair and all my luggage. And again, the same story. You are not allowed to leave the state. Um, my medicines were finished. My medicines were finishing. And uh, I had, I need the medical treatment, so I went to the hospital. I went to Bikur Cholim. Once I went there, somebody with a white uh, doctor, like um, hospital clothes, came to me and he say, Rabbi Yosef, how do you do? Kind of cynic talking. I say, how do you know me? He say, who does not know you? Again, it's very funny voice. It's okay, I did not come here for being famous. I came here because I need medical treatment. He say, yeah, you will get a very good medical treatment. Go here, stand, sit here. It was very strange behavior and I didn't know how to behave back on it. But I did what, what he said. I sit down, and then the man come to me, and he said, listen, now you can come with me voluntarily, or I can take you. Decide how do you want to come. 
I say, where to? He say, I have to take you to the hospital because you don't feel good. But I say, but here is an hospital. Why do I have to go to another hospital? You can give me my medicines here for my pains. And he say, um, no, you have to come with me. And he already hold me for my arm. And it was very hard holding. So I say, I thought, okay, I better walk. I better go with him, normal. So then he put me in an ambulance and he drive 20 minutes away from Jerusalem. And then it was like in hospital. And um, they opened electrical gates. It was security over there, people with guns. And then come kind of a doctor with very serious and cold face. And he tell me, hello, Rabbi Yosef. Can you hear me? I said, yes, of course. Well, of course, I hear. He said, do you, you also hear voices, right? I said, when there are noises, then I hear them. I'm not a deaf, of course. Beside this, I don't hear any. I understood what he's, where he's going to. So I said, beside this, I, I, I hear you when you talk to me. <laughs> but beside this, there is no any other uh, ab, ab, uh, uh, normal things that I should register them here. He, didn't, he wasn't satisfied for my answer. And they brought me into a um, closed department. It looked like a prison to where the murderers. I recognize at least one that I know from the newspapers. And people in terrible situation, you can, far away from Jewish behavior, how the team is dealing with those people. And uh, I had to uh, deliver everything what I had, my money, my documents, my passport, my telephones. But because I saw that the situation is like this, that something terrible is going to happen to me, I hide one telephone and I wait that it will become evening. And when it's become dark, I and people were a little bit um, busy with other things, I took my phone and I called to the Netherlands and I say uh, what's going on and they were very worried about me over there and I already hear in the department the telephone are uh, ringing and behind the glasses of the medical team I see uh, somebody who worked their point on me then I knew that they are talking about me on the phone and I felt and saw the atmosphere that they are unhappy about what is happening. And one come to ask me, do you have a telephone with you? I say yes. Then they knew that the plan is collapsing. And in between less than 24 hours, uh, I was out of there in a very strange way. Somebody come and pull me from my wheelchair, push me into an ambulance, took me to the center of Jerusalem and throw me really throw me out in the center with a letter in my hand that I'm released from the hospital. I did not receive any tablet or any injection. What I'm sure was the plan. But uh, thanks God, uh, I survived. That was not the only thing. The second experience was that I'm driving, driving in a bus with another 16 people and then a civil car passing uh, our bus and at once uh, putting on the car and uh, some kind of blue light, stopping the bus and they picking me out of the bus and taking me for requesting for the all night long in the police station in, uh, in, Pal in there, Jerusalem. near Jerusalem. It wasn't in Jerusalem, okay. another city. Mm -hmm. And also there in uh, the questioning, questioning one of the policemen coming and telling me, uh, some things are better to forget. You don't have to register things that we already know. And no one in the, in the world is interesting about your stories. And you, it's in your hand to decide how long you'll stay here. When you forget it, then it will be good. They refer about the stories of 8 March 2000, the day that I was kidnapped and tortured here in Amsterdam. Okay, so I returned to Me'a Sha'arim, and the people saw that uh, there is nothing to do just to help me to live away from there, and if necessary, in not regular way. 
and the condition was that uh, I cannot take anything with me, inclusive my wheelchair not. And uh, the condition, another condition was that uh, um, I will not really direct know who is helping me. 